Bonjour Charlotte, how are you doing today? Merci. Merci. It's in French. I didn't on tell peut, you. On peut parler en français. Hein? Oh my lord, another uh, great surprise actually from you. But anyway, uh, I think we're going to stick English because okay. the audience is more, you know. But I would love to carry on speaking French to you afterwards. So yeah, thank you very much for your time, Charlotte. We're here, second day, almost at the end, almost at the second day of Innovate Finance Global Summit 2019. It's another great success, I believe. So Thank could you. you please share your views on how the event uh, went so far? I mean, we're, yeah, we're delighted with the success of the mm -hmm. event and we're delighted with the fact that the members really enjoy it. The yes. members have sat there you know, in the investment zone, they've sat in the hive, the hub, the den, you know, the <laughs> stages, you know, the pink stage, the blue stage, the purple stage. I know, it's and, you know, when you have that and you have people sitting there coming up and telling the team, you know, what a great job it is. It is just a member conference. It's a very big one. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part of the job. And I think we can all agree it's been a pretty successful couple of days. I think it's been, it's been great. I mean, I had the opportunity to listen to some of the panels, which I think the, the format is very good, by the way. You managed to gather not only great speakers, but the idea of doing something more conversational yeah. and not just yeah. presentations all the time. I think that's very clever. And I think uh, you can judge the success of your event and your success by the time it took you just to do like 200 <laughs> meters from another part of the building to just manage to come here and reach this very section. So uh, very, very impressed, very impressed. Thank, Thank you. you, yeah. Um, so we work with a lot of fintech and uh, we're always interested in helping them grow and accelerate their growth based on your extensive experience of the industry. Do you see any clear challenges in for fintech in the UK in 2019? So, and what are those challenges for you? As an expert in this yeah, I mean, I think you know, every fintech would say that it's never a smooth journey. You know, doing any startup in any industry is not a smooth journey. You know, when you're doing it potentially in a regulated environment, mm -hmm. you know, half or half the fintech companies that we represent are regulated. It becomes a little tougher. You know, we are still don't have necessary clarity on what's happening post Brexit. You know, so obviously that is still being pushed back but it's still looming there. Um, you know, so I think we, it would be silly and remiss of me to say it's all going smoothly. However, you know, um, you know, the more work we can do around the capital and investment arena, I think is really important. You know, it isn't an easy journey going through VC investment for the first time, understanding that. Sometimes that's just sharing best practices and education. Um, you know, but for us, it's about shining that spotlight on which of the investors are out there that invest in fintech, which ones are looking to invest more, uh, which companies are looking to raise capital. You know, so we'll, we'll, we'll stop short of actually matching, which is a regulated market, but we can sit there and help bring both parties to the table and, and share that expertise. The other piece that everyone will talk to you about is skills and talent. You know, how do we get the race for skills and talent into it? You know, it's, it's a global competition. 40% you know, of Silicon Valley is overseas talent. You know, that's the same talent that we're competing for here. You know, and we have 42% of fintech in the UK comes from outside of our borders. You know, so again, the attractiveness of the UK is really important to show that. You know, we're very encouraged to hear the Chancellor's remarks today about PhD students, but fintech need a wide berth of talent. Um, and we just need to think about how we're going to do that. You know, we've just launched the Innovate Finance Jobs Board for our fintech members, which is great. Getting that out to universities to sit there and educate on what fintech is, because you know, we live in a, quite a fintech ecosystem here, but the further you go from London, you know, it's not quite so well known. Um, but also working with the banks as well, who are also innovating, or are putting their own fintech people in. Um, so I think you know, the skills and talent piece is really, really important of how we manage that. But let's be, you know, let's be careful not to sit there and say it's only talent in London. There's talent across the country. There's talent from overseas. And I think it's our duty as the industry body to sit there and say that there are other solutions for talent. You know, there's diversity to look at. You know, there's national talent to look at. You know, and hopefully we can, we can make sure that we help the members there. And uh, again, it's fascinating, but uh, and Brexit coming up, possibly having a bit more clarity on Halloween day, maybe on my birthday, five days later, Guy Fawkes day, I'm not sure. But um, the impact on skills and talent will surely be felt, felt, you know, like in the next few months or years to come. So do you see that as a major, in addition to all the other PR and potential compliance, tiny tweaks or issues there at the moment with the big uh, unicorns? Will that affect the ability of fintech firms, especially the one targeting the consumer market, yeah. to grow and to really make a mark and compete against the incumbent banks or not? Um, you know, it's and I don't want to be negative here, I'm just trying <laughs> oh, to you know, I'm a glass get a sense. Person, yeah, a glass <laughs> you know, there is additional cost 
Mm. Right? You know, it's not going to stop companies from going overseas, just like companies already in our membership go to Asia, they go to Australia, they go to the US, you know, they go to Canada. You know. So you know, it's a well-trodden path for fintech to go global, and we see that both ways. Um, at the moment, it's a much easier path to go to Europe first. You know, so, you, so we have seen more companies have gone to Europe first because they passport in, it's easy for them to do that. This potentially means they're going to be opening second offices. You know, potentially their, you know, their cash they've managed to raise from VCs is going to be moved a little bit more you know, into setting up those offices and hiring the talent there. And that's why companies are frustrated on what their lack of clarity is. But it's not going to stop them. You know, any smart company is going global from day one. You know, it's, it's, not, it's going to learn to operate in its own market, it's going to be success in its own market, and then it's going to choose its second market and third market carefully. You know, does this make Europe less attractive in the future? Let's see. You know, I, I've already talked to some companies who say it may affect their judgment, and maybe they go to markets further afield, or bigger prizes, maybe a bit more challenging, but if it's the same challenges, maybe you go for the bigger prize. But you know, I don't think it's going to get, get fintech, you know, stop fintech growing here in the UK. You, we haven't seen it yet. Investment numbers are pretty significant for 2018. Q1 this year has been fantastic. You know, over a billion raised already in UK fintech. Mm -hmm. So we're not seeing you know, any type of investment appetite decline on the back of it. So therefore, you've got to think that they believe in the story, and let's hope yes. that that you know that continues. Okay, still very positive then. I'm always positive. <laughs> that I know, I can see, I can feel it even. It's <laughs> it's very appealing actually that level of positivity and. Uh, um, you're very busy again, so let's uh, ask you just a couple more questions, if it's okay with you. We, uh, we're talking about um, a great event already, and you built over the years, you know, and you managed to put something quite extraordinary. Where do you go from there? How can you make it even better <laughs> next year? Well, I'm probably running out of space around the Guildhall. I think was, every, every, sing, every single one. corner has, <laughs> has been used over the last, uh, over the last couple of days. Um, but that's half the attractiveness of it. You, I think you can go to many events around the world that are shows. You know, they sit there, 40,000, 50,000. You know, I think it's really important that we actually keep that more intimate nature. You know, we have over 2,000 people that have been through the door. Um, the fact that we had 500 investor meetings set up mm -hmm. on the back of an app that we launched this year for the first time. I know, you know that's and quite extraordinary you know, It's been well, amazing. For an app, and uh, that's something that, you know, that app gets launched a week in advance. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, because you have that closeness and easier to set up the meetings, we have heard from the, you know, the companies out there that actually it's been easier for them to use it. They like the fact there's been the matchmaking there. They like the fact everyone's there. It's easier to bump into people. You know, so you know, and we love the Guildhall. Everyone loves the Guildhall. You know, 15 overseas delegations that have come in you know, this, this year um, have had a great experience. And having that match of, sort of the history of this venue, you know, that isn't a traditional events venue, Mm -hmm. um, matched with the innovation coming in from I fintech, yeah. I think is part of the charm. Symbol, um, yeah, exactly. But we will, you know, no doubt about it. You know, dates are set for next year already. Um, you know, so they got they so got. So people can out. start. Yeah, and they can start. Registering. Okay. Yeah, and I think we will definitely go bigger on the investment side again. You, okay. That will continue to expand that zone because that has been full all day long, every day. Um, yeah, so certainly work to be done there. And you know, and, and people want to come and meet the fintech companies. They love you know, what we've done with the hub. We've got all the fintech companies together with some of the international delegations. You know, so certainly you know, we, we'll take the feedback every year. We change it, we evolve it, you know, and hopefully it becomes even bigger, even better next year. <laughs> <laughs> and the Pitch 360 is something you're going to again carry on doing. Yep. So Yeah, we, we love Pitch 360. Mm. I think you know, it's such a marvelous you know, um, event and the team does an amazing job. And we've moved that off site you know, for the first time this year to yes. make it again a smaller more intimate thing so it's not so daunting as being in the great hall of the guild hall um, the format is very good as well it's, it's snappy it's, it's like short it's, you don't yeah, want to spend hours just listening to other no. showing slides but it's slides yeah. but for investors you know they sometimes you know they see the one the companies that you know are doing well they know that some of the bigger names in fintech you know, but why they come to events like this is to meet the ones that they don't know about yet that they might be investing in, in three to five years time and that's what i love about that pitch 360 event is you sit there and you showcase even for us we go along and we listen to companies that's great we love what you're doing love the tech um, so it's just a good way to understand some of the trends some of the companies the technology behind them and also just meet the people meet the founders which is important as well yeah i think my only regret of being here is like i can't be in both <laughs> both no. part of the events i'd no. love to no, be we're, we're high in tech here but well. we haven't gone to hologram yet but yeah, uh, maybe next maybe, year maybe, maybe next year <laughs> maybe 10 years i know you're very positive but let's let's, <laughs> let's say 10 just to be clear like just, but i'd love to experience that at some point yeah so thank you so much for your time thank charlotte you. merci beaucoup yeah, uh, <laughs> ravi d'être ici et d'être partenaire avec vous et maintenant je vais vous laisser juste uh, avec votre fille demain et le dentiste uh, <laughs> c'est so, très gentil so c'est très gentil merci beaucoup thank you charlotte